Good afternoon and welcome to five reasons why you shouldn't harm your loved ones during quarantine. I wanted to take a minute today um, to talk about a few different things um, that are different, that are not really related to our other content, but very relevant to our current situation. First and foremost, as some of you may know, today marks the two year anniversary when Christina Daskis and her family were tragically killed in a car accident in Colorado. Uh, People ask me all the time about the Daskus and where's the Daskus and Kirsch Daskus. The Daskus is in my heart and she's really with us and guides our firm um, in so many ways, uh, even though she's not here. And so I think that a lot of the survival of the firm that continued after her passing is due to the strength that she instilled and the fuel and the energy that she created while she was here. It's really hard to lose your best friend. It's really hard to lose the first person you talk to in the morning and the last person you talk to on your way home from work and then you see them all day in between. But I had the the honor and the privilege of having that best friend and she's still here. She's here in my heart and she's here in our in our name and what we stand for at our firm. Um, the integrity and the kindness and generosity that she possessed really helped form the DNA of what Kirsch Daskus is. And Um, As I said earlier, I hope that during these difficult times, um, our gratefulness and our our appreciation for our loved ones and for all of those unsung heroes that we don't know um, just overflows. Uh, There's not really enough we can do to help each other or help our community right now. And so um, I think that we should take strength in those who we loved, who lost, or those who have been taken because of this horrible disease and, and move on and believe and have hope. And, um, we will get through this. I, two years ago, I never thought that I'd get through it. And here I am. And I think that we're here bigger and stronger than ever before. So um, I really wanted to talk about friendship and gratefulness and mindfulness and all those principles that fuel my life and, as I said, are really the bedrock of our firm. But um, we can't really do that because a bunch of other stuff happened that I feel like I should update you on or I haven't done my job for the day. Um, As some of you know, today, tonight, at sundown, marks the beginning of Passover. And um, it's ironic because if you look at the story and when the Israelites were fleeing from Pharaoh in Egypt many, 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 many years ago to avoid the plague of having the slaying of their firstborn, the Jewish people marked their, their front door and... Um, and the angel of death passed over. Uh, As you know, Jewish people love to have big families and adapt everyone into their family. So um, from my family to yours, um, I urge you just for one day, um, believe that we'll all be safe and that that angel of death will pass over and we will be strong and we will make it through this. But we have to stay home. Um, okay, so on to what we really need to talk about today, but thank you for letting me uh, have that moment to share with you the significance of today and of some of the people in my life. Um, first and foremost, uh, today, the, well, as of yesterday, the statistics are there's 845 deaths, in Michigan, and we are now at 18,970 diagnosed. Um, 
our diagnosed numbers are going up between 1,000 and 1,500 a day. Um, our deaths are also going up at a pretty steady rate uh, of about 100 a day. Part of the increase in diagnosis is the increased number in people being tested. The um, There are... Uh, over the last uh, day and a half, however, a new situation is plaguing Michigan, and that is yesterday, 734 Henry Ford employees and f- over 1,500 Beaumont Hospital employees tested positive for the virus. These are dangerous times, and where there are a lot of of positives happening, Um, including yesterday, Governor Whitmer establishing that all staff in senior citizens' homes, nursing homes, will be tested prior to going into work starting today. So that's a good thing. Um, That's a vulnerable population that had not been considered prior to today. Another one is our MDOT drivers who are transporting people for essential reasons, essential businesses, to, so they can stay open and also to our frontline uh, providers. They are all getting masks from the city of Detroit today. Um, if you think about what the governor said about how every one person who's, ex- who's exposed potentially can pass that virus on to 40 more people, and think about that. If you have the senior citizen uh, workers and the, and the MDOT public workers without any personal protection equipment, just help. Just protecting those people alone can really help us get an upper hand on what's going on. The other good news is that as of today. Um, Governor Whitmer, as promised, um, has helped the unemployment office deal with the overwhelming number of applicants. In the last two weeks, over 300,000 applications have come in. And just as a point of reference, um, prior to the stay-at-home order, the first week of March, they were processing about 5,000 a month, let alone now they're they're getting three hundred thousand in just two weeks. So there are extended hours. There's also if you go to the website, make sure you go to your letter of your last name so that you're you're processing directly to the person. There's been some middle people and screening people who have now been eliminated to make it uh, easier for the public. And so. Um, So that is also a new thing for today. What else is happening? Um, On Michigan.gov, you um, will see there's a new provision that is the guidelines for face covering anytime anyone is in public. Um, I'm in my backyard right now. That's why I don't have my mask on. But um, if you've seen my my funny picture with my, my mask and my hat, um, I wear a hat with my uh, monogram on it because then people can still know it's me. Um, there, uh, the, the ticketing for violating the stay-at-home order is alive and well. Um, there have been $1,000 civil fines issued all over the Metro Detroit area and um, also in, and in the Kent County area. Um, I haven't done a lot of research in the rest of the state. Um, there have also been some of the criminal uh, misdemeanor tickets given out, um, which have possible 90 days in jail and a $500 fine. And some of the activities that people were doing, um, there was a family playing, um, playing t-ball in a park And there were neighbors who put up a volleyball net on the property line and had two on one side of the net and two on the other side of the net. Um, And then 
there were some people who were uh, had an actual landscaper come to their house, not them doing their own uh, gardening, but um, having a landscaper come to their house. And those people were all fined um, with the with the five hundred dollar and the criminal misdemeanor. The other um, order that is really changing things that came out yesterday was by the Michigan Supreme Court. And this is Administrative Order 2020-08 from the Michigan Supreme Court. And it's a little concerning because basically um, where at the initial, I'll call it lockdown that began in early March for COVID-19 and making our courts safer, um, and really having only essential matters heard in limited number, li- limited kinds of cases, limited numbers of people in the courtroom and in the courthouse. This order kind of says, let's try to do business as usual. We're just going to do it by video. And it's very concerning because the order specifically says that um, you can use the two-way interactive video conferencing technology or other remote participation tools under the following conditions. Any such procedure must be consistent with the party's constitutional rights. Okay, let's think about that. You have a right to have an attorney. You have a right to have an attorney with you at every critical stage of the proceeding, in court with you. If you are on a video conference to the courtroom, you're on one line that's coming in, your client's on another line coming in, you don't really have the ability to communicate with your client during the conference. You can use the Zoom messaging in some court proceedings and just pick the person that you're going to be messaging with. But in most court proceedings, that feature has been turned off. So that's one that's a problem. Obviously, the right to speedy trial is a problem. They are not going to bring jurors in, especially on capital cases, to sit within inches of each other um, for weeks on end. And that we also have the issue with the the jail population. And that's going to be one of the, the next things I talk about. But I'll just mention one completely heartbreaking story. Um, and some of you may have read about this, but I just, it just, it, it breaks my heart. I can't believe that this is what would happen. Um, as we talked about yesterday, Wayne County, the Wayne County Jail had a pretty significant number of employees and sheriff's deputies test positive. They've had zero um, inmates test positive because they have not done any testing. Yes, that's true. Um, Yesterday, a man who had been very sick and had been asking for a doctor, asking to go to the emergency room, he was serving a six-month sentence for a drunk driving offense. Um, they kept telling him, you're fine, you're fine. Um, he did not get any treatment. Instead, they released him yesterday with a bus ticket. He got home and he died within minutes. Um, it's abysmal in there. Um, there's no social distancing. It's not clean. Have a complete inability to to maintain, you know, surface surface clean. You know, wiping things down every time someone touches them. There's no gloves. There's no masks. Um, there's constantly people in and out, both inmates, visitors, um, as well as employees, doctors, nurses, psychologists, probation officers, um, and there, there's no social distancing, and they've had to even make it worse. And there's usually between, there's eight or more inmates in one cell in order for them to have an empty cell somewhere 
for someone who comes in with the virus or tests positive upon coming in. Now, again, as I said, Wayne County isn't testing inmates at all. So I don't know what they're doing. The procedure I just described to you is what they're doing in Washtenaw. And I believe they're also doing it in Oakland. Um, but going back to the, the order about courts, um, before we were limited only to essential matters. Um, those were the absolutely cannot wait. Um, and the order said that courts were to implement emergency measures to mitigate the transmission of the virus and provide the greatest protection possible to those who work or have business in our courts. And now they are, um, now they're being urged by the Supreme Court to not be as strict as to what they hear. It does um, give permission for adjournments courts are directed to implement measures to ensure all matters may proceed as expeditiously as possible under the circumstances. And before, they all civil matters were being adjourned. All criminal matters where people were not on bond, I'm sorry, were on bond, um, were being adjourned. All misdemeanors were being adjourned. Um, there is a uh, the governor has uh, told um, any uh, landlord tenant or any um, eviction proceeding proceedings um, and that no one should become homeless during this time. So that left us with before um, the the essential matters dealt with either parenting time, bond, issues, early release issues, and in and anything having to do with an incarcerated inmate, including trials, but we, they couldn't bring in the jurors, so you couldn't really have a jury trial. And the other problem is, since the order says that the only trials that aren't supposed to be adjourned um, are for incarcerated inmates, that tramples all over their constitutional right to be presumed innocent and to have an unbiased and impartial trial because there's no way, if they're having a trial, and that's the d directive from the government, that they wouldn't, that, uh, that, that the jury would know that, or think, or be mis, you know, misled to know that um, the client or defendant was not in jail. So they would know that, and that's prejudicial, and that's a problem. So um, that is basically where we are um, as far as updates for today. As you can see, it's beautiful out. Um, take advantage. And does anybody have any questions? I'm going to give a shout-out to um, one of our our people watching um a huge huge victory in um a custody case she knows who she is um i represented her her son in a, a false allegation of sexual assault we prevailed um having the case dismissed and then my um most incredible friend and colleague who does family law as her specialization did the custody case and won him uh, sole physical and sole legal custody and the opinion just came out a couple days ago and I love victories they're so fun um, there's nothing better than knowing that justice is served um, I did file my motion for the re um, return of the two-year-old so cross your fingers that we get some justice there. There has been some directive from the federal from the federal government uh, about about returning children and trying to enhance the reunification efforts. However, unfortunately, um, it may all be for naught because the Department of Health and Human Services has instituted a policy where all in-person parenting time shall be 
suspended. And so that is kind of a catch-22 there, but we're dealing with it. So does anybody have any questions? I'm looking. I am from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, which is a suburb of Detroit. But I do um, cases all over the country. Um, I consult on cases all over the country. And I, um, in some of them, I have admission uh, to actually be of counsel. Um, and I uh, do practice all over the state of Michigan um, all the time. We have an office in Big Rapids as well as an office in Bloomfield Hills. Any other questions? Oh man, there's so many people I adore watching right now. Thank you so much. Um, and, and one of them is from New York. And I really, really hope that you're safe and healthy. Um, JR, I'm just going to single you out. It's nice to see your name and hear from you. So with that, I don't see any other questions. Um, I guess I should, if, if you need anything, I'm here, whether it's, you know, legal or just peace of mind. Um, we have a lot of resources on our website, kdlawgroup.com, and um, we're open. We're doing Zoom calls and consultations and reviewing documents. We're helping um, some businesses fill out their um, PPPs and their SBA documents, um, you know, we're just doing whatever um, our clients and their friends and our fans need. Um, our phone number is 248-792-3060. And as always, you can email me, lisa at kdlawgroup.com or carly at c-a-r-l-y at kdlawgroup.com. Carly speaks fluent Spanish, so um, as does Gabby, our paralegal. So we are bilingual. I'm not, but they are, and can really help a lot of people um, who are the most in need. And it's our goal to be the voice of those who can't speak for themselves. So with that, remember, very few people look good in horizontal orange stripes. Don't harm your loved ones during this time. We will get through it. And be happy, be healthy, and stay home. I'll talk to you tomorrow.